Dear colleagues and students, this is Faiz Shikarchi. I'd like to welcome you all to this scientific session about the management of uveitis. Uveitis is a flammation of part or all the uvea tract, iris, ciliary body, and coral, and or adjacent structures, retina, retinal blood vessels, and vitreous. Uveitis is a cytothreatening disorder and sometimes associated with life-threatening diseases. Management of uveitis is a challenge for the ophthalmologist for the difficulties in the diagnosis and treatment. In many cases, there are no pathognomonic clinical signs or specific tests for definite diagnosis. That's why diagnosis sometimes remains as undetermined, non-specific, probable, incomplete, presumed, or suggested. The etiology of uveitis has a wide range of diversity and is greatly influenced by genetic, ethnic, and geographical factors. Uveitis can be caused by infectious or non-infectious causes, and uveitis is either local ocular disease or associated with systemic disorders. Treatment of one type of uveitis is completely different and sometimes contraindicated for the other types. Therefore, there is no empirical therapy for uveitis, and use of steroids empirically carries a high risk of blindness. Diagnosis of uveitis is a collection of data, requires knowing the pattern of uveitis in the community, the clinical features of different causes of uveitis, ocular and systemic manifestations, and selection of target investigations to support or exclude the diagnosis according to the clinical features and regarding the pattern of uveitis in the community. According to a previous study published in Middle East African Journal of Ophthalmology, the most common causes of infectious uveitis in our community are toxoplasmosis, presumed TB uveitis, followed by herpes simplex anterior uveitis. And the most common causes of non-infectious systemic uveitis are BKH, Behjet disease, ankylosing spondylitis, and juvenile idiopathic arthritis, while the most common specific ocular uveitis are phosphalanitis, followed by Fuchs or rhidocyclitis, and white dot syndrome. According to this study, infectious uveitis account for about 30% of the causes of uveitis in our community, and their management requires specific antimicrobial drugs, while non-infectious causes have a different etiologies, and their management requires specific regimes of steroid, immunomodulating drugs, and or biological therapies. Therefore, use of steroid empirically in the management of uveitis carries a high risk of blindness. Diagnosis of uveitis requires a step ladder approach. After a short history of the present eye complaints, onset and duration, acute, chronic, or recurrent, unilateral or bilateral, painful or painless, we start with the first step in the diagnosis, which is ocular examination. This is the main stone in the diagnosis. We examine both eyes after pupillary dilatation, and we examine anterior and posterior segments of the eye to detect laterality, anatomical type of uveitis, anterior, intermediate, posterior, or panuveitis, and pathological type of uveitis, graniomatous or non-graniomatous. Sometimes diagnosis of uveitis can be concluded in this first step, example, in Fuchs or rhidocyclitis. But if the diagnosis is not reached by this step, 
we go to the next second step, which is systemic manifestations, present and past. Questions directed according to the ocular manifestations regarding the probable diagnosis. Example, if the patient has sensitive glue, we ask about deafness, vitiligo, and alopecia. While if the patient has retinal vasculitis, we ask about recurrent mouth and genital ulcerations. Sometimes diagnosis of uveitis can be concluded by this second step. But if the diagnosis is not reached, we go to the third step, which is target investigations. Investigations are selected according to the probable diagnosis suggested by ocular and systemic manifestations regarding the pattern of uveitis in our community. Target investigations used to support the diagnosis or exclude other differential diagnoses, while undirectional investigations are misleading. Examples of this step ladder approach for the diagnosis of uveitis. Case number one 40 years old female with unilateral chronic blurring of vision. Step one in the diagnosis is ocular examination, which is the main stone. We detect unilateral stellar KPs randomly distributed, plus one cells in the AC, no synecdia, diffuse iris atrophy, posterior subcapsular cataract few cells in the anterior vitreous, and no more funda. The diagnosis is Fuchs rhidocyclitis. The diagnosis is concluded by this step, ocular examination, and there is no need to go to the next steps, systemic manifestations or lab investigations. Case number two, 28 years old man with sudden unilateral learning of vision. Step 1 in the diagnosis is the ocular examination. In the right eye, we detect plus 1 cells in the AC, plus 3 cells in the vitreous, with focal retinitis at the macula and adjacent chorioretinous scar, while the other eye is completely normal. The diagnosis is recurrent retinal toxoplasmosis. The diagnosis is concluded from the first step, ocular examination and there is no need to proceed to the next steps of systemic manifestations or lab investigations. Case number three, 30 years old female with bilateral or chronic recurrent blurring of vision. Step one in the diagnosis is ocular examination. We detect bilateral granulomatous KPs plus two cells in the AC posterior synechia, posterior subcapsular cataract, sensitive glue, and plus two cells in the vitreous with multifocal namular depigmented spots and subretinal pigment clumps. Step number two in the diagnosis is systemic manifestations. Present and past directed questions according to the ocular examination regarding the probable diagnosis. For this case, the patient gave no history of ocular trauma, positive history of deafness, vertigo, and tinnitus, and positive history of vitiligo and alopecia. The diagnosis for this case is complete VKH in the chronic recurrent stage. The diagnosis is definite Lab investigations are not required and may be misleading. For example, if we send for tubal pigment skin test and the result is positive, as many of the Iraqi people have latent TB and positive tuberculine skin test, the diagnosis and the treatment will be not correct. Case 4. 30 years old man with bilateral chronic recurrent blurring of vision. Step 1 in the diagnosis is ocular examination. 
In the set lamp, we detect bilateral fine KPs, few cells in the AC, plus the three cells in the vitreous. One die examination showed diffuse retinal vasculitis or sheetening of the blood vessels. Second step in the diagnosis is systemic manifestations. Questions are directed according to the ocular examination. Regarding this case, the patient had positive history of recurrent mouth ulcerations and genital ulceration. The diagnosis is complete vehicular disease. The diagnosis is definite. And next step of lab investigations is not required and may be misleading. Case number five. If we have the same case of bilateral non-granulomatous panuveitis with retinal vasculitis, in step two of the diagnosis, systemic manifestations, patient gave history of recurrent mouth ulcerations, but no history of genital or skin lesions. Step 3 in the diagnosis is target investigations. According to the clinical manifestations regarding the pattern of uveitis in a community, the most common cause of non granulomatous panuveitis and retinal vasculitis in our community is Behgett disease. So we select pathology test, and if the result is positive, the diagnosis of complete Behgett is confirmed. Undirectional investigations are misleading. For example, tuberculin skin test may be false positive as it acts as a pathology test in patients with Behgett disease. Surgical test for toxoplasmosis IgG is positive in about 60% of the normal Iraqi people. And immunological test for collagen vascular disorders antinucleic antibody may be positive in healthy individuals. Case number six. 30 years old man with sudden unilateral blurring of vision in the right eye. Step one in the diagnosis is eye examination. The right eye plus one cells in the anterior chamber plus three cells in the vitreous and focal retinitis at the upper temporal vascular arcuate while the left eye is completely normal. Two in the diagnosis is systemic manifestations. The patient is not immunocompromised with negative history of mouth ulceration, genital ulceration, skin disorders, or arthropathies. Step three in the diagnosis is target investigations. Investigations are selected according to the probable diagnosis suggested by ocular and systemic manifestations regarding the pattern of uveitis in our community. The differential diagnosis of Boca retinitis in our community are acquired toxoplasmosis, viral retinitis, acute retinal necrosis, presented with Boca retinitis in the mid periphery rapidly spread circumferentially with retinal necrosis, while cyclomegala virus occurs in immunocompromised patients. Behgett disease associated with retinal vasculitis and is bilateral in more than 80% of cases. Regarding this case, the probable diagnosis suggested by clinical manifestations is a newly acquired retinal toxoplasmosis and the target investigation required to support the diagnosis is ELISA test for toxoplasmosis IgM and positive results confirm the diagnosis. Number 7. 40 years old female presented with bilateral sudden blurring of vision of one week duration. 
Step one in the diagnosis is eye examination. With the sit now, we detect few cells in the anterior chamber, plus two cells in the vitreous. One day examination showed bilateral serous detachment of the sensory retina and disc swelling. Step two in the diagnosis is systemic manifestations. The patient gave history of headache, vertigo, tinnitus, and deafness. Step 3. Target investigations. According to the probable diagnosis, depending on the clinical manifestations and the pattern of uveitis in our community. Regarding this case, the most probable diagnosis is acute VKH. Other less common differential diagnoses are osseo placoid, pigment epitheliopathy, osseo scleritis, and masquerade syndrome like metastasis tumor or lymphoma. The target investigation required in this case to support the diagnosis of acute VKH is the fluorescein angiography which shows a star sky appearance with multifocal hyperfluorescein leaking dots and late pulling of the dye. Focal points in the diagnosis of uveitis. Diagnosis of uveitis is a step ladder approach. First, the clinical features, ocular and systemic, are the main stone in the diagnosis. Second, target investigations. According to the probable diagnosis, depending on the clinical manifestations regarding the pattern of uveitis in our community to support the diagnosis or exclude other differential diagnoses. Undirectional investigations are misleading. Thank you for your attention. I hope this scientific session about the diagnosis of uveitis was useful.